While I'm doing this test, you will notice my voice repeat, but that will go away fairly quickly, so nothing to worry about. Okay, everything's looking good. That's pretty good, actually. I got the microphone. Okay, I think we're good. Okay, the test is uh, the test is concluded. It looks like the audio is set up correctly. If something doesn't sound right to you, please let me know so I can fix it. Sometimes this thing over here wonks out on me a little bit. So tell me if the sound stops so I can resume and continue the lesson in a way everybody can understand what's going on. Hello students, how's everybody doing today? Looks like some students are coming in right now. Tonight we are learning about chord inversion. So uh, I'm going to do the formal intro here in a minute. But what we're talking about is basically how to identify root position, first of all. First inversion, second inversion, triads, as well as the three inversions for seventh chords as well. How to identify them on sheet music and the piano and how to play them. Okay, we'll get started here in about two minutes. So how's everybody doing? Great to have you with us. Let me take a look at the chat, see what we have going on. Chris Egerton says, what's good? Nothing much, man. How you doing? So glad you could come out with us. And JP, JP, I do remember you. It's been a little bit of a while. I used to watch your streams all the time. Sorry, I've missed a lot. Been busy, so certainly understandable. Glad that Chris is uh, doing well here. So if anybody, whether it's your first time out or you are a returning student, feel free to say hello like Rich has just chimed in here. Always love to hear from new and returning students, of course. I think I have this setup almost all figured out now to where the microphone isn't in the way of the keys and everything. Uh, so like I said, with the new setup, I actually it's been like two months now with it. Uh, pretty much got it figured out now, I think. Okay, we're going to get started here in a minute. Let me just greet uh, somebody else who has just joined us. Uh, Dimitri? Dimitri. Okay, so, uh, apologize if I mispronounced your name, but Dimitri, I think. Greetings from uh, Serbia. Welcome to the live stream. So happy you could come out with us today. PandaCraft Gaming is back once again, everybody. So happy you could make us. And Cheryl is back once again. Okay, so you can continue to come in and say hello, and I will say hello to you. But we will get started here in a second. Uh, Maxard is here. I think you have been here before. I'm not entirely sure, uh, but your name does look familiar to me. So welcome out if it's your first time, but if you are a returning student, uh, welcome back. You are always, always welcome to come out and join us again. Okay, here we go. Let me get everything, uh, my T's crossed and my I's dotted here for the lesson. We'll get started in another minute. No problem, thanks, says uh, Dimitri. All right, great. Okay, here we go, everybody. Uh, let me think. Let me. Do, oh, I need this. So, how is everybody doing? While I'm getting this set up, uh, feel free to let me know. But I should just take a second. There you go. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to do the intro here. Just let me think about what uh, I come up with earlier. Okay. 
A root position triad. Uh, let me try that again. A chord that's in root position is evenly stacked, and the notes are. Hey, how's it going, Abigail? Let me try that intro again. I kind of brain kind of froze there for a second. A chord that's in root position is evenly stacked and has the root or the name of the chord on the bottom. However, chords don't always appear like that. They can appear in what we call inversions as well. So that's what we're talking about tonight. We're breaking down inversions for both triads and seventh chords, which are four note chords. And we're going to be talking about what they look like on sheet music and what they look like here on the piano. So let's get right on to the lesson. Okay. How's everybody doing? Abigail's here once again. So happy you could make it here, Abigail. Okay, the first topic tonight is root position triads. On the piano, they look like this. You start on a note, you skip a note, you play that note, skip a note, play that note. They are evenly stacked. Now let me show you what they look like on sheet music. This actually is not in root position. You can pick out a root position chord right away because there are no real gaps in between the chords. As you can see, the notes from each other are stacked, kind of like a snowman. And that's what they look like on the piano as well. It looks just like it does on the sheet music. Now, here's the fingering for how you should play root position triads. This is true for all root position triads. One on the root note, three on the middle note, which is the third we call it, and five on that last note, we call that the fifth. One, three, five with your right hand. Left hand, it's five, three, one. So it's just in reverse. And that works no matter what kind of triad it is, whether it's major, minor, diminished, or augmented, it's one, three, five, and then five, three, one. Okay. Looks like somebody has already answered Rich's question here. Next, we're going to talk about first inversion triads. Now, the thing to understand about inversions is you're basically taking the three notes you have for the chord. So say we had C major, C, E, and G. You're just changing the order of the notes that appear in the chord. That doesn't change what type of chord it is. However, it does change where the root is. Because remember with root position that the name of the chord or the root is on the bottom. However, when we invert it, we change the order up. It's still a C major chord, but the root is now on top. Let me show you what this looks like on the sheet music. Okay, so as you can see now, it's not evenly spaced anymore. This was the root position triad. What we did, what it's going to look like here on the piano is we're taking the bottom note out we're keeping the two notes we had the third and the fifth right where they are and we're moving the root up an octave from where it is so we've changed up the order we now have the order of E G C same three notes just different order what does this look like now uh, on the the sheet music well there's a bigger gap at the top of the chord as you can even see from on the piano so if you take a look here there's a bigger gap right there at the top of the chord. You can spot a first inversion triad every time, perfect every time, whether it's treble clef or bass clef. If you see that gap, it's actually what we call a fourth, meaning that the top two notes are four notes apart, one, two, three, four. So there's always a fourth at the top 
if the triad, which is a three note chord, is in first inversion. Now the fingering for the right hand for first inversion triad, and this is true for all of them, major, minor, diminished, augmented, no matter where they appear on the piano, like what the root is, whether it's an A flat major chord, C major chord, it doesn't matter. The fingering is going to be, using the one example I gave you, is going to be one, two, five. With root position is one, three, five, but as you can see, if I try to do that with a first inversion triad, it's awkward. It's doable, but it's awkward. So you want to switch to one, two, five. The left hand is still five, three, one. And that's because you have a kind of a bigger gap here between uh, your pointer finger and your thumb there. So you have a little bit more room here. You can still use the third finger. You don't have to mess with it. So it actually matches the root position triad, but only for the left hand. Remember, the right hand changes to one two five and then the left hand's five three one all right let's go on to second inversion uh yep there is an exercise for all three inversions rich i'll give that to you towards the end hey how's fire flower doing uh dave is back once again all right so glad to have some returning students here Okay, let's get us ready here. Uh, that's where we need to be. All right, got him. Next, we're going to talk about second inversion triads. So just remember that the whole point of inverting a chord is you're changing up the order. Well, you can change up the order again. Let's take a look how we're going to do that. So here's our first inversion triad we had a second ago, C major and first inversion. So we can take the bottom note out and move that up an octave. Again, remember to keep the top two notes where they were. That's the whole point of it. If you mess with that, it won't turn out right. So this is what gives us a second inversion triad. Now, where is the bigger gap in this chord? Well, it's towards the bottom this time. So let's see what that looks like on the sheet music. As you can see, there's a bigger gap at the bottom of the chord. With first inversion, it was at the top. Second inversion, it's at the bottom. So if you see that spacing, no matter where it is on the staff, that's going to be a second inversion triad. So that's how you can identify it right on the sheet music. Now let's go for through the fingering for these. So with the right hand this time, it's one three five. Oh, hey, that's just the same as C major again, or root position again. I meant to say, with the left hand, however, we have to switch to five two one because this it's just how the spacing is. It really helps. You can do five three one, but naturally your third finger is going to be over this B. That's the wrong note. So you kind of want to go with how your fingers fall naturally on the keys. So remember five, two, one, and one, three, five with the right hand. Hello, Barbara's back again. So happy you're here with us, Barbara. Barbara is a regular attendee of the live stream and Fuddy Duddy is here, I just saw. Uh, he's late from uh, Bangor, Maine. Okay. Let's see what we got here, everybody. And now we're going to do root position seventh chords. Uh, all right, here we go. The next topic we're going to talk about is root position seventh chords. Now, you may be thinking, doesn't a seventh chord have seven notes? No, that would make way too much sense. Like a triad has three notes. That makes sense. You know, triangles have three points, three sides. Triceratops has three horns. So a triad how it would have three notes. However, a seventh chord, it's not called a quad chord. It's called a seventh chord, has four notes. Let me show you what I mean here. So here we go. Let me, let me erase this here for us.
Kennedy is here. All right, Kennedy, second time. Sorry if I missed your name there earlier, Kennedy. Welcome out, back out to the live stream. Okay, a seventh chord has four notes. It has a root, like before, a third, like before, a fifth, just like any triad. It's, it's always a triad of some type, plus another note called a seventh. So I'm not going to get into all the different types of sevenths, but the fingering and all the things we're going to talk about, the spacing, applies to all types of sevenths. So the only type of seventh we're going to talk about today, because that would be in a lesson of its own, is the major seventh. You have a major triad plus a major seventh, what we call the leading tone. It's only a half step away from an octave of where we started from the root. So we have C, E, G, B. Let's see what that looks like on the sheet music. Hello, Caroline and Tager is back once again. Okay, here we have a root position. Remember, root position means that the name of the chord is on the bottom. Therefore, what kind of chord is this? It's a C major seventh chord right here. Now, what is the fingering for this? And actually the spacing, as you can see, it's the even spacing, just like the triad, plus another note. It looks like a snowman, I guess, with another another part to it. You know, a four-part snowman kind of thing. They're evenly stacked like that. So the fingering is one, two, three, five with your right hand. With your left hand is five, three, two, one. So it's reversed from the right hand. You can't use one, three, five anymore like you could for triad. And that's because you need to hit another note. So you just extend your hand out like that. And one, two, three, five makes the most sense. Let's go into first inversion, seventh chords. Hello, 2 a.m. here, says Dimitri. Uh, okay, I use uh, something called staff pad. To answer Fuddy Duddy's question. So uh, you can ask general questions now, but we're actually going to have a time at the end for questions about uh, the inversions that we're talking about. So if you have some in mind, keep them, and then when we do that section, uh, let me know those, and then I'll fit them all into the same section like that. Cheryl knows what's up. She knows uh, everything by now. All right, let's take a look. Uh, let's see here. Rich has a very relevant question. He says, can you use one, two, four, five fingering? And I assume you mean for root position triads or root position seventh chords. Well, this is the one I wanted. One, two, four, five. Well, the problem with that, I find that feels really weird. And in general, you don't want to have a gap between your fourth and fifth finger just because the muscles between those fingers are weaker, much weaker, actually, than between fingers one and two. So one, two, so if anything, if you ever want to stretch any part of your hand, it's between one and two. I can even stretch up a sixth, maybe kind of a seventh is stretching it, but I can stretch up even a sixth between fingers one and two. If you start to stretch out between four and five, like I said, your hand will get weak. Um, and I just find, I find that fingering odd. If it works for you and you're able to play it perfect every time, then I don't have a problem with it. Uh, maybe your hand is just designed a little bit differently or the muscles in your hand, it just feels better to use one, two, four, five. But I would stick to one, two, three, five. That's just me. Yo, uh, let's see, uh, Yo D Man is here, he says hi, I think it's a he anyway, welcome out to the live stream, so happy you could be with us, I got this today, yeah, alright, says Cheryl, alright, let's take a look at what we had, we need root, no, we need first inversion triads.
Okay. Now we're going to talk about first inversion sevenths. So, like I've said a couple times, we're switching up the order of the notes. It's going to look a little different, though, from when we were inverting the triad. So let's take a look on how it looks different. Here we have a first inversion seventh chord. We have the notes, it's the same C major seventh we had before. Now we have E, G, B, C. We've changed up the order. Now, actually, when we invert it, there's no longer a bigger space anywhere. In fact, there's less of a space even at the top. And that happens because when you invert a seventh chord, you take the bottom note out, move it to the top, it creates a second. Uh, an interval of a second just meaning the notes are right next to each other at the top of the chord so you're always going to notice this cluster of two notes at the top of the chord this is true for all sevens by the way where they're clustered together where one of them moves to the side and that's because with the second it's too hard the notes are too close together with the second to put them up vertically so they kind of just slide one of them over to the side. So if you ever see something like this, you're talking about a first inversion seventh chord. Now the fingering for this for the right hand is one, two, four, five. The fingering for the left hand is five, three, two, one. And that's how you play a first inversion seventh chord. Okay, now we're going to talk about a second inversion seventh chord. So we're once again changing up the notes that we had. So let's take a look. So we're going to be taking the bottom note out again, this E, and then we're going to move it up an octave to the top. Now, what does this look like? Well, now you can see that the second interval, the two notes close to each other, are now in the middle of the chord. It's the same for on the sheet music as well those two notes are right next to each other like that so you can identify a second inversion seventh chord if it has that interval of a second remember that the notes kind of go side to side in the middle of the chord the fingering for the right hand for this is one two three five and the left hand is five three two one and it's true for all sevenths no matter what type they are. Uh, let's see. Okay, Rich asks here, one of our live stream attendees, uh, is the sevenths are minor augmented diminished? Is the fingering going to be the same? The answer is yes. So let me just test one. So we have a, oh, let me show you. You have a D major 7th, you have a D dominant 7th, a D minor 7th, a D half diminished 7th, a D fully diminished 7th. I'm still using the same fingering, a 1, 2, 3, 5, 2, no matter what type of 7th chord it is. So great question. It doesn't matter what type, fingering is the same. Same thing with the inversions as well. Third inversion sevenths. Wait a minute, there's a third inversion? How did that happen? There was only two inversions with the triad. Well, let me explain. So with the triad, remember you invert it. There's first inversion, there's second inversion. There is no third inversion because when you invert it one last time, you go back to root position. You're just up an octave from where you were. However, with a seventh chord, root position, first inversion, Second inversion, and oh hey, because we have an extra note added, I can invert it one more time there. 
before we get back to root position. Therefore, there is a third inversion. So remember that to figure out what inversion a seventh chord has, you're looking for that interval of a second. Is that second at the top of the chord, the two notes next to each other? Is it in the middle or is it at the bottom? So if it's in second inversion, the second is always at the bottom. Now, what's the fingering for this one? So for the right hand, it's one, two, three, five. With the left hand, it's five, four, two, one. So one, two, three, five, five, four, two, one. And that's how you play a third inversion seventh chord. Okay, now I'm going to give you a little bit of a practice exercise to do for next time. Whatever that may be. I would work on this maybe for a couple of weeks until you feel, really feel like you're getting the hang of it. It's really important to be able to play triads in root position. You may have been practicing your chords already and you're able to do that. So here's what I want you to do. You want to start with C major. Play root position. Invert to first inversion. Second inversion back to root and then back down then what I want you to do is go up a half step move up the root a half step play a major triad on that that's C sharp major then you want to invert it invert it again back to root you're inverting it back down and then what you want to do move up your root a half step again then you're gonna play a D major you're gonna invert it up and down now it takes time to be able to do it as quickly as I can and you may have to break it down you know do it just right hand first and then you know the left hand as well and then put them hands together but I'm able to manage because uh, I've been doing this for a while then you move up after that move up a half step again you may be seeing this seeing where this is going you invert them back down then you move up another half step do the same thing on the next one so each time you're moving up the root a half step and then you're playing the major chords inverting them all the way up and all the way down okay for sevens you do the same thing right oh this is a little bit tougher it takes a little bit more thinking to get this one right maybe i should do the one for sevens i think i'll get the hang of it here in a second so then the next one would be that one oh okay for some reason that sounded strange to me wow I really need to do this for my major sevenths but I would do the same practice I think I can do this one a little bit better same practice exercise you use for triads. Whew, there we go. I just need to work on C sharp is all. Then you go all the way up until you make it back to C with moving up the root. Half step each time. So do that every day. You'll have to learn your triads first, of course. But do that every day for a month, and you'll notice a big difference in your ability to play up and down inversions quickly and effectively, which is very practical and useful in playing real piano songs. Hello, Stellarum. Stellarum is back once again. So happy to come out with us. One of our other great moderators here along with Rich. We got double the, the police task force out today looking for mischievous uh, commenters. Fuddy Duddy's back. Or Fuddy Duddy was already here. Okay, let's see here. Let me see what I got. I think I'm through a lot of the main part of the lesson, but this is what we're going to do. Uh, hold on a sec. Okay, now I'm going to be answering your questions about inversions. I've answered a few already that fit perfectly into the middle of the lesson there. So, but I reserve a little time here at the end of the lesson so we can come together and answer questions about it. I have a question here from Barbara. 
where it says, I thought C7 has a sharp. If there is no sharp, isn't it that C major seventh? Yeah, if there's no flat, it's C major seventh. So that would be C, E, G, and B. That would be C major seventh. And then if it had a flat at the top, that's what we would call C dominant seventh. If it was a minor chord, C minor chord with a flat up there, that's what we call a C minor seventh chord. So yeah, C major seventh, no flat, C dominant or C minor. Also the full half and fully diminished as well. Uh, also have that. F oh, fully diminished doesn't. That has a double flat. But um, basically, C major seventh does not have a flat at the top. Okay, I have another question here from Rich, which is a great question. Do you suggest writing down the notes of the inversions until you get the hang of it? Yeah, absolutely. I used to do this a lot when I was first kind of doing music analysis. That's actually kind of what we talked about in Friday's live stream, if you want to check that out. Uh, but you're here for that, Rich, already. But when you're doing music analysis, so say I have a chord that's spaced between uh, two staves. So let me kind of show you what I mean here. So say I have a chord written be, yeah, between two of the clefs, right? So it's hard to figure out exactly what that chord is just by looking at it. But what I used to do in music school is write down each individual note and then say, okay, what triad do I know or what chord do I know that has a G, a B, and a D? Oh, well, G major does. So now I have it memorized. But yeah, I even used to do it for chord analysis as well. So yeah, I don't mind you writing down the letters of the inversion if you need to at first because eventually it will get ingrained in your mind especially if you do that practice assignment uh, I gave everybody a few minutes ago okay any other questions about what we talked about tonight we've had some great questions so far allergies are back a little bit tonight but nothing crazy luckily Let's see here. Hold on, everybody. Okay, so while more questions are coming in, I want to show the uh, live stream students something in case, you know, it's your first time here or maybe I haven't mentioned this yet or you haven't heard much about it. So if you go to pianolessonsontheweb.com, once the stream's over, of course, uh, you will see let me actually this is a better review for this you'll see this page which is my website pianolessonsontheweb.com if you like the lessons you see here on youtube and you're looking to learn more about piano and also the things that can help make you a better pianist and well-rounded musician then the courses i have over here on this website which there are a lot of them i have over 25 courses can really help you learn a lot more about piano music so i really highly suggest you go there piano lessons on the web.com and read about it watch the front page video about it let me know any questions you may have through email you know tim at lessons on the web.com and uh, just take a look around if you take a look you can browse the courses individually so if you go you know to the buy courses page you can click on any of them it shows you a description on what the course is about you can watch a preview video for the course but one thing I want to tell you about is that if you look at the top of the Buy Courses page, there's course packs where if you click on a pack, obviously they'll show you that there's a bunch of courses all lumped together for a much lower price than buying them individually. This one comes with nine courses, so you get you know nine for the price of uh, you know I think three. If you bought three individual courses, it would cost as much as this pack of nine. So you get a good deal. Also. If you use the code YouTube at checkout, you will get 15% off no matter what course pack you pick, no matter what courses 
you decide to buy. So once again, let me know any questions you have. Go there, check it out, read about it, and learn about it. And uh, yeah, I just want to let you know about it because if you like this sort of thing and what we talk about, you will like uh, a lot what you see over there. Okay, let's take a look here. Uh, Rich says, I love learning new things. I agree, Rich. Me too. Uh, I'm going to work in major seventh chords for the week. All right, great. Perfect. Cheryl says, I got the today. Thanks. So much good. Bless you for the time and effort you help uh, all of us. I'm glad I took the time out from vacation to watch you. All right, Cheryl. You didn't have to take your time out of vacation. I know vacation can be precious, uh, especially for those of us who are busy and work. And, you know, summertime's that special time for vacation, but I really appreciate it. It's always good to learn something new, uh, as Rich would agree. Abigail says the recordings will help to look over as well. So if you uh, haven't caught on by now or you haven't he heard me explain this, what happens is we have the live stream here. And then it takes me an hour, maybe two hours to... Uh, edit the video together. However, there's some hours in there because YouTube takes time to, you know, process the video uh, or whatever. It takes time. So generally what you can expect is that we'll have the live stream, you know, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's evening for me. It'll be out the next morning. So if it's morning for you, it'll be out by that evening. So probably uh, within about 12 hours or a little bit more than 12 hours or so, you'll see the completed and edited uh, version. So if, you, if you're wondering why the live stream disappears, that's why. But it always comes back. Okay, let's take a look here. Rich says, uh, Tim, do you have any tips on playing evenly? Did you have trouble with that? So some tips on playing evenly. I have two. One, slow down. If, if your main goal is to play your hands in sync and as even as possible with the rhythm, slowing down is the best thing you can do. And then like we talked about, you play it again and again and uh, gradually increase your tempo with a metronome, uh, I recommend, until you get to where you need to be, which is the second point I had, uh, which is use the metronome to play along. If you feel like you're getting out of sync with the metronome and playing unevenly with that, guess what you need to do? You got to slow it down. I think slowing down, when in doubt, slow down, seriously. If you're running into a problem again and again on a piano, Slowing down 95% of the time uh, can help you. And a lot of the times it's also uh, the main solution that you should take. Okay, Abigail says practice, practice, practice will help. Rich, that is true. Practice. <laughs> that is true. Practice will help, but uh, doing those other things also helps. Yeah, Fuddy Duddy 99 says... Will the Yamaha 535 reveal these chords and inversions to us? That's a question I think Rich can answer better than me since I don't have this. So Rich, on your keyboard, does it show you what inversion you're playing? I know Synthesia does, which is like a, uh, if you haven't seen it, it's the thing with the colored bars that come down and you play. There's like a practice mode where when you play a chord, it says uh, what chord it is. Tim, when I play, it sounds like I'm banging on the keys. Any suggestions? Well, uh, I'm not sure you can elaborate on that, I think, a little bit. Uh, because I'll get... Because what I think is like you're just doing that kind of thing. And if you're doing that kind of thing, uh, slow down, again, I think would help you. Uh, as well and don't bang on the keys so hard you know use gentle gentle arm and wrist movements well it's mostly arm so if, you, if you're getting too much sound out of the piano and you're not getting enough delicate you know delicate I don't know like definition in your music you're probably playing with too much arm weight so just kind of dive back how much weight you're putting on the keys and slow it down a little bit and that'll help uh let's see hmm, not f uh, sure fuddy duddy says rich i don't really play the key worth all the bells and whistles so i'm not really sure on that either abigail says the lesson is very helpful tim as if uh i were to see the written music 
and how the sevens is written. I would have been confused. All right, great. Well, I'm glad staff pad once again saves the day and the setup uh, I have can show you uh, everything we need to understand the lesson. So that's perfect. Glad to hear it. Oh yeah, check out a video review of that keyboard is probably a good idea as well. I want to say the answer to that question is yes for showing the inversions on that keyboard, but it's been a while since I used that keyboard, so I I can't tell you for sure. Thank you for being a blessing again to all of us. We love you, says Abigail. Thank you very much, Abigail. Oh, let me sh go back to the chat here. And thank you so much, everybody, for attending tonight. If you want to, uh, you know, give back in some way, you can feel free to leave a tip with Super Chat here in the uh, live stream. I also have a Patreon. But another great way of helping contribute to the channel, ensuring that there's better lessons coming out, you know, all the time, is uh, enrolling courses over on my website is another great way of supporting me. My website is pianolessonsontheweb.com. But if you type in www.lessonsontheweb.com, it'll take you over there as well. And that way you get to learn something and help the channel out. Dark Days. You'll have to check out the uh, recording for what an inversion is, but I'll tell you really quick. So an inversion, just to kind of give you a preview of what we talked about, is when you are changing up the order of the notes in a chord. So in this chord I have the note C, E, G played at the same time. Well, when I'm inverting it, I'm playing the same note, C, E, G, but now the order is E, G, C. And then I invert it again, so I have G, C, E. They're all the same chord, they're just in different inversions. There you go. All right, Rich has been paying attention. He knows uh, all about chord inversions, of course. Okay, let me let me show you something here, everybody. So if you go back to my website, there's something called the community page at the top. It's like on the top toolbar. Uh, I think this view would be better for that. Click on the top cool toolbar community page. And first of all, if you aren't subscribed already, subscribe so you get all the greatest updates from, or the latest updates of when we're meeting and the lessons coming out. But you also want to hit that bell, as you can see from this picture here, next to the subscribe button on the YouTube page. And that, and select all notifications, and YouTube will do a better job, at least, of letting you know when new videos come out when we're meeting live. So remember to subscribe and hit that bell. But the most important thing is if you scroll down on the page, we have the calendar of when we're meeting and the topics we're talking about. Now, I'm not sure about next Sunday uh, in terms of what the topic will be. It just says community Q&A. But as you can see here, Friday, we're talking about jazz chords for newbies. You don't want to miss out on that one if you've been wondering about uh, not only the seventh chord we talked about today but also ninth chords 11th chords 13th chords we're just going to go this is like the first introductory jazz chord lesson if you want to get into that kind of thing if you're looking forward to it then come on friday and i would love if you could come join us i know i'm really excited for that one it's a little bit different from what i usually do on the channel Okay, uh, the following Sunday we are going to meet. I'll update the calendar on exactly what that topic will be. But as you can see, the following Friday is a great one. Three great chord progressions you probably don't know about. Chord progressions are really good for learning to improvise or getting songs to sound even better. Uh, so you don't want to miss out on that. Write that down on your calendar too. So come back every now and again and check out the calendar. Uh, this is a free part of the website so anybody can access. I just wanted to let you all know about that. Okay, Sean. Wait a second. There's more people here. Singapore. Sean is greeting us from Singapore. Says Sean. Well, greetings. So happy you come out with us. Fireflower says, 
Uh, I'm definitely going to practice that. I'll have to study the other core types first. All right, great. L. Norris is back once again. Hey, Tim, sorry I'm late. That's okay. It happens to the best of us, but so glad you could come out with us once again. And then check out the recording if you did miss most of the lesson where we talked about chord inversions for both triads and seventh chords. Sounds exciting. Looking forward to learning jazz chords, says Norris. All right, perfect. Okay, Rich says, uh, I think the best lesson I've learned from him is the intervals lesson. It made sight reading so much easier. Let me show everybody what Rich is talking about. So if you go on the YouTubes, I mean, where else would you be, right? Oh, and we're live right now. How about that? So if you go on YouTube and you type in uh, read music faster. I'm the first one that comes up. Yay. All right. So you see my face right there holding up that uh, sheet music there. How to read music faster with this special technique. I believe this is the lesson Rich is talking about, where I combine the idea of intervals with reading sheet music and how you can use this to read music much faster. So if you're interested in this sort of thing, remember to just look up read music faster. I also try to remember to put a link in the description uh, for, you know, once I post the recording, but look that up. Read music faster. How to read sheet music faster with a special technique. Okay, and everybody, any more questions about uh, inversions or maybe just in general about what we'll be talking about in the next couple of weeks or the website, pianolessonsontheweb.com, if you have any questions about that. Excuse me. Let me know. Oh, and then also just kind of update you while some comments are coming in. Uh, so a few months ago, we all came together and had a live stream. You may not have been able to attend if you're new. Uh, we had a live stream where I gathered ideas from students, you know, live stream attendees. I got a huge, awesome list of you know, topics for the following live streams. You're going to see more and more of those. Actually, the last couple of live streams has been from that list. And then uh, actually from here on out, it's all that. For a while, it took me to even get to the list because I had the, you know, live stream scheduled out already. But just letting you know that the work we, you know, kind of put together to come up with these great lesson ideas is already coming into effect. And it seems like people really like these lessons so far. So I'm really, really happy and excited to finally be able to put this uh, all into practice. Uh, GHGG says, your lessons are always helpful and great. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Cheryl says, I have a book on harmonic scales and have been practicing. Perfect. Very good. Hopefully it's been going well for you. Okay. Abigail says, it is the first time I've heard about third inversions. Okay. Yeah. So with seventh chord, you have another inversion involved. If you start to have... Ha actually, here's the formula. If you want to know how many inversions a chord has, it's always the total number of the notes of the chord. So say the chord has five notes. Say we have like a ninth chord or something like that where we have uh, the triad, we have the seventh, and then we have another note up here, the ninth. Uh, it would be pretty hard for me to play this in root position, but I'll do it between both hands. But anyway, we have five notes now. So how many inversions will there be? Well, if there's five notes, there's going to be four inversions. So just however many total, minus one. <laughs> Rich says, uh, I heard about third inversion uh, before, but I was too scared to try it. <laughs> So Fireflower is asking what the name of the book Cheryl is using. I believe for scales, right? Harmonic scales. Uh, 
Uh, Tim, do we have to know forward versions as well? No. So, uh, generally, you're not going to have to worry about that. Especially when playing piano. Because, like I said, once you start to get, getting into five-note chords, at least in root position, they're really hard to play. You'll, most of the time, those chords, when they're found in music, are split up uh, between the two hands. Uh, how often are inversions used in any form of music? The answer is all the time, Fuddy Duddy. All the time. So you'll see inversions constantly. However, it only matters. Let me show you. A lot of times you'll have music chords spaced out. Let me think about this for a second. Sometimes you'll have chords spaced out between two hands. So how do you know what inversion it is? Well, it's all about what note is in the bottom in the bass. So if it's a C major chord and G is at the bottom, that has to be a second inversion chord because that's the one when you invert it. You know, here's C, there's, you know, first inversion, second inversion. That's uh, the only one with G in the bass. So if the order is mixed up over the top of the chord, it's all about which note is at the bottom. I know a little confusing. That's why I didn't bring it up today because I could. I'm gonna make a lesson uh, just on that by itself. Uh, can I make up a tune using the seventh chords and uh, invert it, please? Okay, let's see what I can do. We're just going to say this sounds like Final Fantasy VII, probably. <laughs> the, uh, the, not the interlude, like the beginning, beginning song when you're like at the, uh, menu screen. All right, hold on, everybody. I got to blow my nose real quick. The allergies are back. Okay, back again. Let's see here. Uh, let's see. Wow, fourth inversions. Can you make up a tune using the seventh chord? Okay, did that. We need to know everything about what... Uh, this is from Abigail. We need to know everything about what we are learning in Music Rich. Uh, let's see. Uh, mansion, scales, arpeggios, cadence. Please forgive the spelling from Cheryl. That's the uh, book she was using for her harmonic scales. Nora says, yeah, Tim, live, live it. Sevenths are so pretty to hear. Thank you. You're very, very welcome. <laughs> Rich says, I don't think my brain can handle four inversions. All right, so only stick to three. Only stick to seventh chords. Like I said, once you start getting into ninth chords, you don't play those in root position. So you're not going to have to worry about, or, or inversions even. So you're not really going to have to worry about uh, that one. 
<laughs> Bless you. I meant love it. All right, great. Thank you, Norris. And thank you, everybody. I guess we'll wrap it up here in a couple minutes. We're starting to approach the hour. So once again, look forward to next Friday's lesson about introductory to jazz chords. I'm really excited to teach it. Like I said, something a little new and fresh for the channel, but still in line you know, with what the channel is all about, which is coming together and learning music on the Internet. Who knew you could learn music on the Internet? <laughs> but you can. Uh, I've had people argue with me, but you can learn a lot on the internet, especially, you know, most of us don't have access to piano lessons, a private piano lesson teacher that we have to pay, you know, sometimes hundreds of dollars per month. Now, if you can afford that, that's awesome. Uh, but, you know, for some of us, the YouTube is the better alternative. All right, Abby Fireflower says, thanks, Cheryl. Cheryl, I don't know why I pronounced it there. We, we were there for a second. That's one of the coolest things, though, that we're coming together and we're, like, all starting to recognize each other's names and we're all, like, kind of chiming in on helping each other out with one, when one of us has a question and I just can't get to it right away, that somebody else immediately is, uh, you know, giving the, the correct answer, too, uh, in the chat. I think that is just so awesome. And I think it really adds to the whole thing we're trying to accomplish here, which, again, like I said, is just coming together and learning as a classroom here online. Bastian, says Cheryl. Yeah, I've, I've, James Bastian is probably uh, who you're referring to. I have that book as well. I know exactly which one you're talking about. I think it has a waterfall on it, if I am not mistaken. I could be wrong. I could be thinking of a different one. Okay, and everybody, I hope everybody had a great time learning tonight. I know I did. Remember to check out pianolessonsontheweb.com to learn more. Oh, uh, I have to do a formal outro. Okay, so I'm doing the formal outro. I'm going to say, you know, at the end of the outro, oh, hey, you know, have a great one. I'll talk to you later. Uh, but that's just for the outro. I'm going to stick around a couple minutes after that. Uh, okay, let's see what we got here. Okay, if you like this lesson and you want to learn more about the topics we talked today about today, it's really, really important that you check the, out the playlist around the piano. I'm going to put some here as annotations, but you can also check out the description. Always a great place to find links to relevant playlists so you can learn more and fully understand what we're talking about. So thanks everybody for coming out today. Tim back here from Lessons on the Web, and I'll talk to you in the next lesson. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm still here, but I, we are going to wrap it up soon. So I do want to thank everybody in the live stream for coming out. Cheryl did confirm that, yes, the cover of that book is a waterfall. I do have it. I actually saw the book just yesterday. I, I taught a student and they had it uh, at their house, but I had that one when I was a kid uh, learning piano for the first time. I did have a great time as usual, Tim. Thank you very much, says Abigail. I guess we can sign off here with everybody here. Screen went black back, Tim. It went back, says Fuddy Duddy. Black. Uh oh. Did it go black for anybody else? Nora says, bye. Try reloading your uh, browser window there, uh, Fuddy Duddy, and that might fix the problem. But we are uh, going to be leaving here in a minute. Okay, let's see here. Thanks, Abigail. Stellarum, thank you so much, Tim, for all your hard work. You're very welcome. Thank you for coming out. I had a great time and always a delight to teach all of you. Uh, everybody have a great week as always. I'll definitely talk to you on Friday. Uh, I'm going to try to actually I've been doing good uh, keeping up with social media. So you do want to check us out on Facebook and all the others if uh, you haven't already. <laughs> okay. Fuddy Duddy says black still. So I apologize Fuddy Duddy. 
Um, but I'm not going to try to fix it only because we are wrapping it up here in a second. Uh, I apologize for it, but, uh, but yeah, usually I would fix it, but we're so close to the end. Uh, Stellarum. Oh, I read Stellarum. Abigail says, thank you to Norris. You too, Abigail. See, our students are coming together and, uh, I can feel the love in the room. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thanks everybody for, uh, help make, you know, this wonderful community we have possible. Okay, I'm running out of voice steam. It has to do with the allergies as well. But uh, thanks, everybody, for coming out tonight. I hope you learned something. And I'll talk to you on Friday when we talk about jazz chords. Get excited. <laughs> and you don't want to miss out. So come to that, and I'll talk to you then. So thank you so much. Abigail sends a hug. Thank you, Abigail. I send you one back.